buckle in. This one is going to be a long one. So we've only played one game since the last time we met, which was a 1-0 home win against West Ham United. Pierre and Toller with the only goal of the game coming 32 minutes in. So what we are going to do today, we are going to complete our season. We've got an FA Cup semi-final against Wolves. Millwall, Spurs, Leicester and Newcastle all in the league and potentially an FA Cup final after that. And the reason why we're doing it is because we are so, so close to beating Birmingham City. We are on 68 points. Birmingham City ended up on 75, winning three wins from our last four games. We need to play it live. We need to see if we can beat Birmingham City. So that will, of course, take us to, to uh, today's first game, which is against Wolves. They are currently in the Premier League, so it's Premier League opposition, but they are sitting in 15th. We should have the advantage here. We should get to their first final that we've ever been in. So in terms of our first 11 for today's game, it's a little bit broken, I'm not going to lie. We've got Jim Walker out, I was starting left winger. Uh, Pierre Entola is suspended, I was starting right winger. Pierre Gio, I was starting right back, is uh, injured. Yepes is returning from injury, I was back up right winger. Um, so we've got some major, major issues in terms of the first team squad. But this is how we're going to line up. Hugh Griffiths in goal. Uh, Harewood at right back, Gilson and Gowronski as our centre backs and Comradi as our left back. A pretty good back four uh, minus Harewood at right back. Our midfield remains the same. Cedric in defensive midfield and Porcino comes in in centre midfield instead of Kevin Magia. Uh, Ian Chapman is going to start on the right hand side today. Uh, Richard Granger, Javier Cortez and Vlasek. Them are the people we are trusting to get us to the FA Cup final. So Wolves come at us with a 4-2-3-1. They've got a lot of regular players. Not a lot of regens in their side. Minus the uh, goalkeeper. There is absolutely none. You do have former man Voisin. Who we had on loan at Huddersfield. In the championship. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Paid £28.5 million for him. Let's get into today's game. We need a win. This isn't as important as the league games. I will stress that. The FA Cup is definitely just a little uh, cherry on the top. It's not what we're aiming for, but it would be nice if we could get to the final. First highlight of the game, it's Ian Chapman with the corner. It's back post to Gilson. Oh, it's over the line. It is over the line. Cedric does slide in and how he got that over the line, I have no idea. <sighs> it was all from a corner from Ian Chapman. I think it was Gilson won the head out of the back post. We'll see it again. It was Gilson, and then Cedric slides in the keeper. <laughs> he just glitches out. The matrix is broken, and Wolves go 1-0 down. We go 1-0 up. Comradi's coming down the left-hand side. Five minutes in. Can he whip it in? He, he ends up turning back to Javier Cortez, who offers the option. He drives inside. Come on, Cortez. Should be doing better with the finish. Ian Chapman with a free kick. It's whipped to back post. Garonski's there, and he heads it over the bar. We're getting plenty of opportunities, and we're definitely taking this game to Wolves. We just need to be very, very wary of this sort of thing. Bogle coming down the right-hand side for Wolves. Plays it to Richarlison. Come and get the challenge, and we can't. And that was a very strange pass. Wolves work it well between the defence and the midfield, and they find Mendy coming down the left-hand side, who cuts in, goes for goal, and that is a terrible strike. Just keep doing that, Wolves boys. That's all we need from you. Another highlight now, 19 minutes in. Wolves do seem to be coming back into the game after we've went 1-0 up. Richarlison, good challenge from Comradi, but it falls to Bogle who whips it in. Garonski does just about enough and Comradi can dispossess Bogle in the end. Cedric plays it out from our defensive area to Richard Granger who drives forward. He beats one. Oh, he slots in Vlasek who should really be doing a lot better with that opportunity. Thankfully for him, it was offside anyway. Wolves coming down this right-hand side once again. Richarlison plays it in. Catronia can't get his uh, foot onto it and we do manage to get rid. Come on, boys. 15 minutes to go in this first half. Get a second goal. Put everybody at ease. We can relax a little bit and we can be less concerned about Wolves coming forward. We sloppily give the ball away trying to push, push it up too quickly and Harewood with a challenge feeds in Catronia and Griffiths keeps us in front. Massive save. We'll stick with this, Levitt with the corner, it's back post, Griffiths claims it, well done. I'm thinking we need to go on the counter. Wolves have really, really stepped things up. I don't know what they've changed or if they've even changed anything. But um, they are looking up for this game. Gilson with a big clearance, can Vlasek win this? He can't. It does fall in Chapman who just gives the ball away absolutely stupidly. And Wolves can come forward with Benesir. 
Oh, stopped a minute. Bogle on the right hand side. Please block block in. We do manage to get rid. Granger, can you counter? He tries to set away Vlasic. He's not going to win that ball. We need to play it into his feet. And Wolves are looking by far the better side right now. Alexander Isaac on this left hand side. Whips it in. Richarlson's there on the edge of the box to Bogle. Feed. Push him out. Oh, he gives away a penalty. Oh, comrade. What have you just done, my friend? It's going to be Isaac who steps up for Wolves. Steps up to take the penalty and he puts it away. Hugh Griffiths can't get anywhere near it. And it's exactly what Wolves deserve. Um, they don't deserve to go in at half-time 1-0 down. In fact, if you look at the match stats, they probably should go in in front. Um, we have been absolutely dreadful a day after we went 1-0 up. And maybe it's not over. Alexander Isaac to Levitt inside. He's got the option on the left from Mendy. Berger's there to Catronia. Benesa, lovely little bit of football from Wolves. Bogle can't get the ball and we do manage to get the block. And our boys are all over the place right now. What was that? Isaac's in behind. Hugh Griffiths is the only man coming out of this with any credit whatsoever. And there we have it. Leeds 1, Wolves 1. Not good. In the other leg, Fulham are getting beat off Liverpool. So it looks likely if we are to get through this, which is a very big might, um, Liverpool would be our opposition in the final. I think in the second half, we are going to have to change how we play just a little bit. Go and maybe up the tempo, go a little bit more direct. Stop working the ball uh, working the ball into the box so much. And I'm actually going to stop playing it out from the defence because at the moment, the way old boys are playing, they just can't be trusted. First highlight, the second half comes a minute in. We are on the attack, but we give the ball away. And Levitt can burst forward for Wolves now. We are a little bit in sixes and sevens at the minute. Thankfully, they go back, uh, reset the play, and we can get back into position. Oh my dears, oh my dears, we are not getting a better goal, this, <laughs> an easier goal this season. Just wait until you see this replay. I didn't think it was coming to anything at all. The Wolves' defence has just absolutely shot itself in the foot. Madeira plays it out to the left back here, uh, the left winger. It's Alexander Isaac who plays it back and <laughs> everybody falls asleep. And Roman Vlasek is on hand to get his 14th goal of the season to put us 2-1 up. That is a gift, boys. Do not throw it away. Nice work through the centre by Levitt and Berger. Feeds Bogle on this right hand side. Whips it into Catronia. Richardson, what a save by Hugh Griffiths. He is very much my man of the match. Uh, football managers sort of agreeing that should be a nine. Half an hour to go. We do have a corner. Chapman plays it and it's cleared by Diallo. We do get their first Vlasic. It's a good block by the defender. And uh, oh, are we going to win this? Is it going to be a counter attack for Wolves? Who knows? Porcino spreads the play to Cortez on the left-hand side. He cuts in. Cortez, please, do better. Right, looking out, old boys. There's nobody having an absolutely awful game, but there is some weak performance. The likes of Richard Granger. He can come off for Abia Ezia. We don't really have any options at right-back from uh, Armando Harewood with Piaggio out injured, so he will have to remain on the field, as will Javier Cortez. Now, this is the worry with our squad. We don't really have that much strength and depth beyond our second choices. So we're going to take off Porcino in midfield for uh, Kevin Magia. And we are going to make him slightly more defensively minded. Actually, we're going to make him a ball winning midfielder. I think that suits his attributes quite well. And in a game like this, we need some defensive stability in the midfield. Langdown gets the ball on the left hand side for Wolves. Harewood does nick it off him and Gilson can clear. But Wolves really are going for this. Comrade misses his, misses his header completely. Richarlson tries to play it in. Benesser out of Berger on the edge. Lang down. Are they going to shoot? Are they working it in? What are they doing? Mendy. He cuts inside as well. They're playing incredibly narrow. And Howard does incredibly well to win the ball. And we can get away with a counter here. Abia Ezia. Fresh legs. Finds it at Roman Vlasic. Finish this. Roman Vlasic, my son. We're going to an FA Cup final. Come on. Well, this all came from the Wolves attack. Harewood does very, very well to win the ball. Abia Ezia showing some signs and some impetus in the attack on third that maybe Richard Granger wasn't offering us. And Vlasek with an absolutely deadly finish. 15 goals of the season for him. 3-1 up. Just don't throw it away now, boys. Four minutes to go in this match. We do have a highlight. We're in possession in defence. We're no longer playing out of the back, remember. And that's still not really helping the situation. Thankfully, Majaya is in the centre of midfield to win the ball back for us. And uh, then give it away. <laughs> Langdown comes down the left for Wolves. Gilson does well with the challenge. 
it does fall to Rabia Ezia and he can drive forward exactly the same way he did for the third goal. He beats one man, he goes for goal himself. Oh my dears, Rabia Ezia. Could he be the key to unlocking our attacking side of things? Third goal of the season for him. That is an absolutely sensational strike and I think it's fair to say he has changed this game since coming on. He deserves a start next game, absolutely. And that is a finish and a half. 4-1 is a very, very flattering scoreline, but it's a scoreline we will take all day. 94 minutes gone, there is no time left in this game. We do go close through Javier Cortez, but we don't care. We we'll score one more, doesn't really matter. At all equals are the same. Leeds United are in the FA Cup final. Well, there's one stressful match down. We've got four more to go. Millwall come up next. So, we're at the, the Millwall game. This should be our easiest game out of the final five. Now, we all know that's never how things go, but hopefully we are comfortable with the three points here. Jim Walker returns to the side. Ian Chapman goes up top as Vlasek did pick up a little bit of a knock in training. He is fine for the bench, and we can bring him on if needed. Entola returns from suspension. Um, Luke Thomas comes in at left back as Comradi is out. Other than that, everything is as it was at the beginning of the Wolves game. We need a better performance today. I don't think we can get away with it twice in a row. Hopefully our boys can do that for us. First highlight of the game, seven minutes in. Oh, and Toller gets dispossessed by Tavares on our, our right-hand side. And he plays it back in. Can we win this ball? We certainly can. And Jim Walker is now going to be the man driving forward from us. We missed him last game. He feeds in Ian Chapman. And Ian Chapman gets his 13th goal of the season. He puts us 1-0 up. Eight minutes in. Huge goal. With that goal, we can lower our tempo a little bit. We don't need to be bombing forward as much as we do normally. And with just the pressure gets off us a little bit. Jim Walker and Ian Chapman combining exactly the way they do. And getting us 1-0 up ideal. Come on boys. Let's let's put on a bit of a show. Let's have a few goals. We all just want to enjoy the day. Relax. And tick one win off the three that is needed. Luke Thomas receives the ball from Gauronski. On this left hand side. He does attempt to get to the byline. Turns back. Cedric ends up being the man. Giving it away. Dennis Mann tries to play it out for Millwall, but thankfully Porcino is there to intercept. Pierre and Toller finds Armando Harewood. Go on, bury this. Difficult for him. You can't really finish. Ian Chapman with a corner, though. We'll stick with it. Oh, we get our head on it. I'm not even sure who it was, but doesn't get it in. I didn't start a Biarezia, did I? I should have been starting a Biarezia. I'll bring him on in the second half. He fully, des he fully deserved the start. Just me mind when blank Richard Gridge is such an automatic option for me. Um, Ezio will start the next game. Luke Thomas whips it in. Entola's there back post. Can't get it goalwards. Are Millwall going to start a comeback here? 25 minutes gone. We have a highlight and that's a beautiful ball for Brooke. And on this right hand side, we do manage to get the block in though and get rid. Millwall working well again at this right hand side for Brooke. And two good passes. We do manage to get rid of the first cross but it comes back out to him. It's in again. Ah, oh, Amadou Diallo. His seventh goal of the season puts Millwall level. That goal puts us in an incredibly difficult position. We can't afford not to win this game. A draw does absolutely nothing for us. We need a win. We've got plenty of time still to do it. There's no need to panic just yet. But we need our boys to step up and be counted a dear. Cedric's oh, lovely ball, uh, ball to Luke Thomas on this left-hand side. He whips it in and Toller's there. Did look like it went in there on the re, uh, on the 3D angle, but it was never anywhere close. Oh, Millwall. Free kick. Griffiths punches it out. It does come back out to uh, Barlow, though, for Millwall. He has to go all the way back. Should be winning that, Ian Chapman. Thankfully, Griffiths uh, gets the over-the-top ball. Oh, Ian Chapman. A little bit sloppy in defence by Millwall. Oh, Ian, please, Ian. We'll stick with the corner. Chapman. We've had some good successes with it recently. Goes to the back post and it's cleared. Millwall pick up the ball in the centre of the park after a sloppy kick out by Hugh Griffiths. But Ian Chapman comes in. That's his work rate on, work rate on show. He manages to beat the defender to the ball and go for goal. Ian, we just need that little bit little bit of extra quality there. And we go into half-time. Millwall 1, Leeds United 1. I am far from happy from what I have seen from the boys. I'm taking off Richard Granger 
and I'm bringing on a beer as here. Can he save us two games in a row? Corner for Millwall. 54 minutes in. Barlow plays it in. Gironski gets a clear only as far as man. Oh, please say that's offside. It is offside. Jesus. Only 25 minutes to go. We run out of options here. Pierre and Toller is having a dreadful game on that right hand side. So what we are going to do, we're going to take him off for Vlasek. We'll put Vlasek up top. Ian Chapman on that right hand side. Um, and see how that goes. Chapman with a free kick. It's played in. Gilson's there. Oh, Gilson. Almost. Tell you what, lads, we're going very attacking. Final 20 minutes, we're going very attacking. This one all draws are no good to me. A defeat is just as bad. Jim Walker struggling out there. We'll bring on Javier Cortez for the final 15 minutes. We're going more direct. Ian Chapman with a free kick. 14 minutes to go. Please bury this. Porcino. He does so. Pietro Porcino gets his seventh goal of the season. Puts us back in front. Come on, boys. A great free kick by Ian Chapman to the back post. He rises highest. He gets his head up. The keeper gets his fingers to it. But it's not enough. And now we need to change. Oh, please, Millwall, don't do this to me. Oh, the go over. So I've lowered the tempo, lowered the passing. Um, hoping the boys just retain possession for the final nine minutes. It's not going to be that way, is it? It's offside. We are so lucky. Michael Oliver is offside. Oh, why Why we're having highlights? I don't want any highlights. We give the ball away. Absolutely stupidly. Come on, win this ball back, please. Oh, Vlasek pinches the ball from the defender. Please make this 3-1. Oh, what a save by the keeper. Roman Vlasek goes very close to putting this game beyond a shadow of a doubt. But it's not to be. Ian Chapman with the corner. Oh, Cedric is there. Gets his head in the first, but the keeper has a good save. Five minutes to go, there's another highlight. I don't think I've seen as many highlights as I have in my entire life since we went 2-1 up. It certainly fails that way. Right, we'll wait and see the outcome of this highlight. If it remains at 2-1 afterwards, we're bringing on Kevin Magia and we're taking off Porcino, a more defensive option in the midfield. Ian Chapman, was never. I was never confident. That's why I wasn't excited. Right, Porcino's had a good game. Obviously, oh, we can't. We've made three subs. Sam... Why are you being stupid? Oh, he would go 88 minutes in. Oh, my dears. Wait until you say this. It's absolutely unbelievable. Nikita Pericord for Millwall. We'll, uh, we'll have to watch this. Murphy to Malumbi. Ball's whipped in. The slowest header you'll ever see. What is Hugh Griffiths doing there? What is he doing there, genuinely? That is absolutely unbelievable. And now... With, what, five minutes of extra time to go. You just know for a fact this game's over. It's a highlight. Four minutes to go. Is it going to be for us or is it going to be for Millwall? Javier Cortez picks up the ball on the halfway line. Sets through Roman Vlasek. Oh, the keeper spills it, but it's not a good strike to begin with. And now our time is ticking away. There is one more highlight. Is it going to keep our hopes alive? How would... It's cleared by Millwall. Cedric keeps it alive. Howard again on this right-hand side. whipped in. Vlasek hits the bar. He hits the bar. And that is it. That was the banker. We now need to win our final three games of the league season. If we had to beat Birmingham City, we were in such a good position a few games ago. And we've just threw it away. Spurs up next. The most difficult challenge of them all. We need six points in the next three to equal um, Birmingham City. So two wins out of this. We match their uh, points total. So we need at least a draw from Spurs to keep the hopes alive. And then if we beat Leicester and Newcastle, we will end up beating Birmingham City's points total. But that, that game can just go away. Right, get the energy back. We need to get a win today <laughs> at home against Spurs. who are currently sitting third. It's a little bit more difficult than the Millwall game. But let's see how our boys perform. Hugh Griffiths in goal. Howard Gilson, Garonski, Comradi. Our standard defence at this point. Cedric and Majaya start. I'm putting Majaya in as the more defensive-minded option. Win the ball back. Get in back in possession. Yepes comes in for Entola, who's had a dreadful previous five games. So hopefully Yepes can show why he should be in the starting eleven. Abia Ezia comes in for Richard Granger, Jim Walker. And Roman Blasek complete our attack on four. So obviously Spurs, fantastic side. 
are going to qualify for the Champions League. They've got fantastic players, but we need a win. <laughs> we'll have, we've put ourselves in the position where we can't afford to drop points in this game. Come on, boys. Give us the win. First highlight of the game comes three minutes in and it spurs on the attack and Bowdo's in behind. Thankfully, it goes just wide. Another highlight now. Spurs with the ball in. Baudu goes close again. He hits the bar. And we are having some difficulties containing Spurs right now. Howard to Majaya. Throwing in the advanced third. We give the ball away, but Majaya wins it back. Come on, son. He whips it in back post. Jim Walker's there. And Jim Walker puts us in front. He's 10th goal of the season. An assist by Kevin Majaya. And we go 1-0 up against Spurs. Absolutely fantastic. The first 10 minutes... It was all Spurs pretty much going by the match stats. But thankfully, we have drew first blood. Kevin Majai doing excellent work on the right-hand side to win the ball back. And Jim Walker's header is perfectly placed to beat the keeper. How will Spurs react to going 1-0 down? Well, they're on their attack straight away. Julio Cesar plays it back to Aaron's. It's whipped in. Headed down by Phil Vodden. Nice play by them. We do manage to get rid just about. But they keep possession. Cesar back in. Back post for Ruggiero. And our lead lasted... A few minutes, Gaspar Ruggiero's 14th goal of the season levels things up for Spurs and we don't need to see a replay. Highlight now, free kick for Spurs, Foden plays it in, Ruggiero at the back post again, Griffiths this time with a good save, I think it was going wide anyway, so it probably didn't need to be saved but he did so anyway, Phil Foden is the man who will take the corner, it's whipped in, Uberman Corner's back post, we do get it clear. And thankfully, all that fizzled out. Looks like we'll be going in at half-time 1-1. I'm not too disappointed. I am disappointed in the performance. Um, we're not playing very well. And some of our players out there, the likes of Yepes on the right-hand side, is having a dreadful, dreadful game. Vlasic up top as well is not playing well. We're going to make them two changes straight away. Yepes off for Entola. Ian Chapman on for Roman Vlasic. Let's see if some fresh legs can change things for us. Ian Chapman with a free kick, 58 minutes in. And Toller's there. Oh, he's offside. Is he offside? He's not offside. We go 2-1 up. Our subs combine. And Pierre and Toller's eighth goal since joining us in January puts us 2-1 up with half an hour on the clock. Can we stay in the lead for more than five minutes, boys? There's the question. Chapman with a corner. It's played in. Oh, my God. That's a free kick. Why? Oh, pushing in the box. It's a corner for Spurs now. Phil Fodden is the man to play it in. Back post Gilson manages to get rid, but they are going to be first to the ball. Abia Ezio with a lovely little through ball to Conradi on this left-hand side. He plays a bat to Chapman. It was his only option, really. And then Toller's there, back post. Pierre on Toller. He just needed to be dropped. That's all. He just needed to be dropped. And he's found his goal scorer and touch again. His ninth goal of the season. Ian Chapman with the assist. Again, our subs combining. And we are three... One up. This will be an absolutely huge result. It will take the pressure a little bit off us going into the final two games. Normally we only need one win to match Birmingham and four points to beat them. Come on, boys. Just hold out for the rest of this game. Only 10 minutes remaining on the clock. We will look to make our final substitute of the game. It's going to be a Bia Ezia. No, it's not. It's uh, going to be Conradi. He's on the yellow card. Um, we don't need to risk... Uh, potentially getting a red card and him being suspended for the next two games so we'll take him off bring Luke Thomas on at left back to hopefully see us out for the rest of this match but there's four minutes remaining and there is a highlight Ruggiero on this left hand side he has caused us problems thankfully that pass didn't and Luke Thomas has passed it Ian Chapman is perfect come on Chapman he's got his assists he's got his assists he doesn't need his goal the highlight does continue Pellegrini to Ruggiero in the box. Good block by the defence. And time is ticking away. We are going to get the win against Spurs. An absolutely huge win. Pierre and Toller and Ian Chapman changing the game off the bench for us. That was really, really special. Spurs, I think we struggled against them away. I think they battered us 6-0 at the beginning of the season. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And we get our revenge. I'm not even concerning the league table. We're not even in the Champions League spots. We are still fighting for the Champions League. But obviously, in our, we know it's points that matter. 72 points with two games remaining. A win and a draw sees us finish above Birmingham City. And that is the goal. And if we do finish on 75 points, um, 
if we win the FA Cup, I'm giving it the Leeds. They'll go on top. <laughs> So Leicester City at home is the next challenge. Get a win in this one and we only need a draw in the final game of the season against Newcastle United to finish above Birmingham. This is the situation as it stands. Leicester are sitting in 16th above Millwall, who we struggled against, but still at home. We've got to do it. We have to. So this is the lineup today. Hugh Griffiths in goal, Howard Gilson, Garonski, Comradi in the defence, Cedric and Majaya in midfield, and Tola, Ezier, and Jim Walker in behind. Ian Chapman, who thoroughly deserves his start today. Come on, boys. Three points is all we after. Do you do have our former man Pedro Martinez trio? Was it Pedro? Or was it Pablo? I can't remember, but he was ours. 20 minutes gone. The match starts are looking pretty favourable uh, in our favour. Thankfully, and Conradi comes down the left-hand side in the first highlight of the game. He whips it in. And Martinez Trio does get back and defends well for Leicester. Oh, Ian Chapman. He should be burying that. It was an absolutely diabolical pass back to the goalkeeper and he should be burying it. Free kick for us. Chapman plays it in. Walker's there. Mejai is there. He's not offside and we go 1-0 up with Kevin Mejai's second goal of the season. He has definitely been... Pretty important for us playing that centre midfield as the ball winner rather than the boxer box. We haven't been able to find the best out of him. And in the past couple of games, we have started to see it 1 0. The rest of the first half is a complete dud. We do go in 1 0 up though, and the match stats are looking incredible. We are definitely on top of this game, and barring any disasters, hopefully three points will be coming home with us. We'll, we'll see though. First highlight of the second half Chapman with a free kick. Majai is there back post. And uh, is that a penalty? It is a penalty. Come on. Yes. Who's stepping up? Is it a bit? Is it a beer as here? Who is it? It is a beer as here. He steps up to take the penalty. Put us 2 0 up and in a comfortable position. And he certainly does 2 0. 57 minutes gone now. Let's see where this highlight goes. We're playing it about in the defence quite well. Cedric and uh, Gilson playing it about quite nicely to Majaya. On to the right-hand side for Pierre and Toller. What can he do? He slips it through for Ian Chapman, who drifts out wide. He whips it in. Jim Walker's there. Jim Walker goes close. Howard coming down the right-hand side. Only 25 minutes left in this game. I would feel even more comfortable at 3-0. And Toller whips it in. It's cleared by Mavro Panas. Chapman's there. Oh, blocked on the line. Blocked on the line again. Twice in a row. And it's going to be a corner kick. Ian Chapman is the man to take it. Come on, Gilson. Get your head on this. Nah, it's cleared. So with 20 minutes remaining, we will look to make some changes. Jim Watt can come off for Javier Cortez on this left-hand side. Abia Ezia can come off for Richard Granger. And Yepes can come on for N. Tola. We'll try freshen up the attack. See if any of these boys can force the way into me plans for the next game with the final 20 minutes remaining. And time is just ticking away here. Leicester not really going for this. Five minutes remaining. I think they're down to 10 men as well with that injury. So uh, they will definitely be on the back foot. Maybe we can make it 3-0 before the end of the game. Comradi to uh, Granger on this left-hand side. He cuts in, whips it in. It's clear by Pan uh, Manro Panas. Ian Chapman's shot is blocked. Um, is this still going to continue? Yep, as to Howard on this right-hand side. A decent cross. Gets past his man. Chapman's there and Ian Chapman gets his 14th goal of the season. And he puts us 3-0 up. With only a few minutes remaining. Nothing to worry about in this game. It's all now down to the Newcastle game. And there is full time. Then Leeds United 3. Leicester City 0. Let's go see the Premier League table. And we're still not in the top 4. On 75 points. This is a massive, massive season for the big clubs. And they have really, really stepped it up. We're on 75 points though. We have matched Birmingham City. And I think... We are on more goal difference than Birmingham City as well. So as things stand, we currently are above them in the leaderboard. But if Newcastle stuff us, we could then drop below them. Newcastle away is our final game of the season. In the league, at the very least. So it all comes down to this. This is the league table, how things stand. There has been some games already played, so we know the fate of Spurs in particular. If we win today... We will get Champions League football for Leeds United next season. If we draw, we probably don't. Liverpool are a point ahead of us. They've got 10 plus goal difference. So unless Norwich beat them 10-0, 
it's uh, highly unlikely that we are going to finish fourth with a draw. So a win is the only thing that matters for league position for Leeds United. We, of course, know personally a draw would be enough to see Leeds come top of our own leaderboard. It all comes down to this. An away tie against Newcastle, who currently sit in 11th with nothing to play for. So this will be the lineup that I hope can do it for us today. Griffiths in goal, Howard, Gilson, Garonski, Comradi in the defence, Cedric and Mejia in the midfield. It's the exact same starting eleven as the last game. <laughs> they, they are our most informed players that we can put out. And I'm hoping that they can keep up this form for one more game. One more game. The FA Cup final will be lovely in the next uh, game after this. But this is the game that matters. We need a win. It gets Champions League football for them. It also beats Birmingham City. Come on, boys. Do it one more time. First highlight of the game. It's a free kick for Newcastle. That's played in. Hugh Griffiths acrobatically comes out and takes control. Oh, no. Oh, no. McCalmont goes close for uh, Newcastle United. It was a long through ball. Cut now defence open. And Newcastle showing early signs of a bit of danger. We'll stick with this corner. It's played in at the front post. Diop gets his head and thankfully goes over the bar. We're keeping a lot of the possession in the first half hour. We haven't really created that many opportunities. But Ian Chapman with a corner. Gilson's there. Garonski's there. And a set-piece goal puts us 1-0 up 36 minutes in. Rafael Garonski's second goal of the season. And could it be the most important one? Ian Chapman is the man who takes the corner. Gilson wins it at the front post and Garonski's there at the back. Just making sure it goes over the line. Five minutes to go in this first half. We will go from attacking to positive And hopefully see out the rest of this half. As Newcastle have a free kick. And they'll go close. Second half to come. Come on, boys. Stay with the rest of this game. No messing about. Three points in the bag. Champions League football for next season. We'll beat Birmingham City. It's everybody's favourite time. We're sticking with it. 20 minutes to go. Nothing happening in the second half, which is fine by me, but we do eventually have our first highlight. Harewood whips it in. Conradi's there on the back post. Ian Chapman's there. Ian Chapman. I just love you, my friend. He's 15th goal of the season. Puts us 2-0 up with 20 minutes to go. This is surely it now. We are surely done. Champions League. All of our objectives completed. Beat Birmingham City, which I didn't think we were ever going to be able to do. 75 points for a newly promoted side is absolutely huge. But it looks like, if things stay as they are, we are getting 78. Woodburn spread the play to the right-hand side for Newcastle United. Do not do this to me. I don't want a nervy final 15. Thankfully, his shot isn't great. 12 minutes left. Is it going to be a highlight for them? I think it is Woodburn to McCalmont. Out of the right-hand side for Aaron. Come on, get the challenge in here. Campagnaro plays it in. Griffiths claims it. And maybe it's going to be our attack. We've played it work for her pretty well from out of the back. Keeping possession quite well with Newcastle. Pressing us intensely. But we find our way to Abia Ezier in the centre attack midfielder role. He gets dispossessed by Harwood Bells. And it's going to be a Newcastle United opportunity here. Woodburn coming down the left-hand side. We get men back quickly, which is nice to see. But they've carved us open here. If they try to find the pass on the left, they don't. They switch the play instead to Aaron, who knocks it down. Antonio Jose, who's in the box. Oh, Jesus. Ten minutes to go. It's now 2-1. His third goal of the season. Newcastle not making this easy. I don't want to see the replay. Um, we've made no substitutes whatsoever. We'll bring on Yepes. We'll bring on Richard Granger. Should we bring on Samuel Bernard at right at left back? He's more typically a centre back, but he can't play at left. Change him to a full back rather than a wing back. Keep him back. And five minutes to go. Come on. Just let time tick away. It is ticking away. I think we'll beat Birmingham City, boys. We have done it. 78 points. We've done with a newly promoted side. Absolutely unbelievable. <sighs> And barring any weird things with the Europa League, we're finished in fourth. We have got Champions League football. We were only seven points away from Manchester City, who ended up winning the league, which is huge. European Championship, Champions Cup is confirmed. Leeds United have Champions League football for next season. We've still got one game to go to make it the best season ever, ever. And that is Liverpool in the FA Cup final. 
Just a little note on personal glory. Sam Williams claims manager of the year. I will take that. This starting 11 made the difference in the last couple of games. So they are keeping their first team spot. The likes of Ezio, the likes of Entola, the likes of Ian Chapman are all starting to dare. Liverpool have caused us problems every single time we've played them. They're a fantastic side. They are the only thing standing between us and the FA Cup trophy. Come on, boys. Let's see if we can do it. First highlight of the game. Looks like it's going to be a free kick for us. Ian Chapman is the man standing over it. Can he be a hero? Oh, he goes close. We started the first half absolutely brilliantly going by the match stats. Much better than I was anticipating. I thought Liverpool were going to be on top, but it does look like it's us. Ian Chapman's free kick is claimed by Reyes. Seven minutes to go in this first half. We work it out well from the back and Pierre Entola ends up on the right-hand side. Gilson over the top to Harewood. It's a good pass and he takes it down well. He switches the play to Jim Walker. A little bit strange, but it does work. Cedric to Comrade overlapping on this left-hand side. Ian Chapman's there. Ian, you should be putting that in the back of the net, mate. <laughs> Would Roman Vlasek? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Now we have a Liverpool nil, Leeds United nil. I'm pretty happy with how things are going so far. So I'm going to tell the boys as such and hope that their performance continues for the second half. Only 20 minutes to go in the match. We're not changing a damn thing. We are happy with how things are going. It looks like the game's pretty evened up in the second half. Ian Chapman with the corner. Gilson's there at the front post and he heads just over 15 minutes left. I'll take extra time. I'm not making any subs until extra time. Um, or until something happens. Uh, we'll try and save our fresh legs for when it will matter most. Liverpool work it well though into the midfield and Trent is overlapping on that right hand side. Conradi marks him well and manages to make the challenge. And the ball is switched to Pierre and Toller on this right hand side. He's got Harewood in support. Do not get challenged. Keep the ball. Back to Entola inside. Oh he gets dispossessed. And it's going to be Liverpool chance. Coronel. Plays in proc on this right-hand side. We've pushed up on the attack. Oh, good save by Hugh Griffiths. And thankfully it goes out of play. Seven minutes remain. Pierre Antella plays in Ezio. Finds Howard on this right-hand side. He's got loads of space to run into and he does so. He comes up against a man. He gets tripped. It's a penalty. Come on, referee. Give the penalty. You know you want to. It'll be a beer Ezio. I think a beer Ezio is going to step up and take it. He certainly is. Come on. Come on, a beer. You've got to put this in the back of the net. Put us 1-0 up with five minutes to go. Come on. Oh, he doesn't. He misses. Oh, Abia Ezia. He's going to be crushed. Howard to Entola. Mejaya. Come on. Keep the chance still alive. Nah, that's a challenge. Oh, we've had our chances. We've had the opportunities. And here's the time running out. Three minutes to go. We are going extra time. And I think we are going to make three substitutes straight away. Pierre Antola will come off for Yepes. Bia Ezier will come off for Richard Granger. And Javier Cortez will come on for Jim Walker. Three attack and substitutes. We are trusting our defence to have the legs to carry us through the next half an hour. We're just hoping that these boys can really, really change our attack. The first half of extra time is just flying by though. And it doesn't look like anything. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe some tired legs out there, Conradi. Gets dispossessed on this left-hand side, but Javier Cortez takes it up. Finds Conradi again. Can he get past his man? He's getting jockeyed pretty well by number six, but he does get to the byline. Back to Cortez in the box. Plays it back to Cedric. I was expecting a strike there from Cortez. Cedric, don't lose the ball there, mate. We are in such a vulnerable, uh, vulnerable position if he does. Cedric plays it out to Conradi. Come on, Conradi. Chapman's there. Oh, he gets knocked off his foot just at the last second. Yep, is. That's a free kick. <laughs> Extra time. Second half. Let's kick it off. Our defence has done superbly. Alongside Cedric. Our attack's been the disappointing factor in this. And we might be going to penalties, boys. The time is just ticking away. Two minutes, one minute. Extra time. 40 seconds remain. And there is a highlight. And there's a free... Oh, Conrad, he's getting sent off. That's what it is. Um, well, we'll move Richard Granger back. We'll put him in a. <laughs> we'll put him out left back. That's our option. We've got no subs left. Please just do not concede from this chance. Cherky plays it in. Mejia clears. Yep, as clears. Fantozzi's on it now for Liverpool. Oh, come on. There it is. There's the full time. 
No, it's not. It's a free kick, but it's pretty much full time. And we're going to penalties, boys. We do what we always do. We auto pick, and we let the fit the gods decide our fate. Fantozzi steps up first for Liverpool. Come on, Hugh Griffiths. Now's the time to put your name in folklore. Not quite with the first penalty. Hopefully, with the second. Richard Grange is going to be the first man who steps up to take it for us. A beer as he has been taken off the field. And Richard Granger misses. Absolute disaster. Iliax Mariba steps up for Liverpool. Hugh Griffiths. He puts it away. Howard. We need you, Howard. You need to bang this. You need to bang this top bins. Oh, he misses. We missed our first two penalties. The FA Cup, it's not, it's not coming to us. It's already over. Cherky steps up for Liverpool. If he puts this away, it's done. He misses. He misses. Come on. Chapman, you've got to bury this, mate. You absolutely have to. To keep even the, the slimmest of hopes alive. And he does. He puts it in the back of the net. Alexander-Arnold. Can he miss another one? Come on, Hugh. You haven't saved one yet. The other one hit the post. He's not saving this one either. If we miss this, I believe it is over. Gilson, our centre-half, is the man slowly trudging along to the penalty spot. He's up against Riaz. All of our hopes, all of our dreams, they rest with you, Gilson. Not to put the pressure on. He steps up. He does bury it. Now, Liverpool... Need to miss this one. They currently have three penalties out of four. If they miss this, it gives us the opportunity to level things up. Who is the final man to take it? It is Proker, the right-hand side of midfielder for Liverpool. He steps up. Griffiths, you're our only hope. Can you do it for us? He's left footer, and he bangs it. Liverpool take the FA Cup, and they win on penalties. Abia Ezia has got a lot to answer for. That missed penalty in the 80-odd minute has cost us the FA Cup final. A, it's still the best season we've ever had. It's the first time we've ever been to an FA Cup final. It's the, We've got 78 points, beating Birmingham City's point total. We've got Champions League football for Leeds. This season has been absolutely fantastic. So I am very aware of time. This will be an incredibly long video. So we are going to just quickly discuss some of the players that I think we need to keep an eye out on in the future. Hugh Griffiths, an absolutely huge signing by the previous Leeds management on a free, and he's been fantastic for us. He has been wanted pretty much all season by various sizing of clubs, so maybe he might leave in the summer, maybe not. I hope they do keep a hold of him. Gilson, I want to point out in the centre half, maybe hasn't developed quite as much as I would have hoped, but he still has been our main man and a rock at centre-back. Piaggio, Probably our best defender in terms of raw ability. Unfortunately, he missed the final 10 games or so of the season with a big injury. So his attributes have declined as a result. Hopefully he comes back next season and is just a better player for it. He is a massive player for Leeds. And um, one of our best signings in the summer, I would say. That takes us on to Cedric, our £25 million signing in January. This boy is our best signing we have ever signed at any club. I'm telling you now. This lad will be the best, one of the best players in the world, without a shadow of a doubt. Very much in his position, but probably overall as well. We will have to watch his career and see how he develops. I'm good that I'm going to be losing him. He was massive. Average of 7.3 in the 18 games. 18 years old. Just fantastic. Jim Walker on that left-hand side maybe didn't have a good of a season as I was hoping. He's still got 9 goals and 9 assists in the 34 Premier League games from that left-hand side. Averaging a 7.06. He's English, he's fantastic, and hopefully he will continue to develop at Leeds. We're going to quickly touch on Roman Vlasek. Massively disappointed in this lad. Five and a half million pounds it cost us in the summer. And with his raw attribute and his raw talent, I was really expecting Kaichi Goto levels of finishing. We did not get it. Uh, 13 goals in 27 games is not bad. 7.07 average written is poor for a striker. And I was massively disappointed in his performances, which is why I wish I stuck more with Ian Chapman. Obviously, not quite as good in the attacking sense, but very well-rounded. He got nine goals and nine assists in 15 starts and 14 substitute appearances in the Premier League. And I'm very happy with him. 
and hopefully he stays at Leeds. He is wanted by a lot of Premier League sides, so I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up leaving the club this summer. So obviously a hugely massive, massive, massive season with Leeds. Completed all of our objectives. Uh, they were disappointed we didn't say high reputation players. <laughs> Gone nick off board. That is not my style. Uh, we didn't reach the fourth round of the League Cup. So uh, whatever. Take a couple of points of us for that. But A plus manager performance. Fourth in the Premier League. 78 points. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. So despite finishing one place below Birmingham City, we do go top of the table with Leeds United finishing in fourth with 78 points. It's been an absolutely phenomenal season. I couldn't have asked for any more. But now, of course, it is time to resign and I will catch you next time as I take over my next club and hope to beat Leeds United.